This commentary is directed primarily to my Euro-American brothers. James Baldwin said, you can't fix what you can't face. John Bradshaw told us, you cannot heal what you cannot feel. It's all so simple, and it can be oh so hard. There is so much in our history we struggle to face. So much we fight not to feel. From our animal cousins whom we unnaturally and unnecessarily imprison and slaughter, to half the human race whom we have unnaturally controlled and dominated for hundreds of generations, to the first peoples whose, gen uh, whose children we slaughtered and starved and whose land we have stolen, to our African-American brothers and sisters whom we enslaved for over 200 years and then have systemically discriminated against right up to this moment. So much. So much. Not long ago, our country observed its Labor Day, originally designed to honor workers, but not the workers' movement which gave us the power to strike for decent conditions and livable wages, gave us social security and unemployment insurance and workers' compensation and the eight-hour day and the 40-hour work week. For over 200 years, organized labor has fought to bring me the time to write this and you the time to either hear or read this. And yet, we barely acknowledge that struggle. Our labor safety laws allow over 100 workers to die in on-the-job accidents every week in this country. That's over 5,000 working men and women dying every year. For what? Our labor law enforcement allows over 1,000 workers a year to be fired for attempting to organize a union, even though it's illegal for corporations to do that. In 2015, 62 billionaires controlled as much wealth as around half of the world's population. As of 2020, a full-time minimum wage worker can't afford a two-bedroom rental in any U.S. state. In 95% of U.S. counties, they can't even afford a one-bedroom. Middle-class workers accounting for inflation, make about the same money they would have made in 1990, while the top two-tenths of one percent of our population make six and a half times what they made 30 years ago. We have been brainwashed by corrupt corporate power that has its hands in every part of government. But this is not some sinister conspiracy brewed by some evil cabal. It's the headless monster of a brand of corporate capitalism that we must continue to challenge. To succeed, we must continue the fight for the rights of working people. And we must demand a living minimum wage of at least $15 an hour tied to the cost of living. And we must fight to increase regulations and enforcement, and if necessary, outlaw the current versions of corporations. If we want a future that offers freedom for most people to live a life without unnecessary strife, a life that truly allows them a pursuit of happiness, this is the necessary struggle. The time is now. Join me in this quest. And to paraphrase Winona the Duke, become the ancestors our descendants will surely thank. I'm River Smith with a comment for Liberation Brew, The Love and Justice Report, Enemy of the People, and TroublemakingPunk.org.